Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the first lecture of Unit Four. So, uh, in Unit Three, we saw the uh, basic and the stock synthesis flow. Um, the uh, Unit Four prerequisite. Uh, the Unit Four requires that you are familiar with Unit Three. You are comfortable with design compiler or working with design compiler. Uh, you should be very comfortable in reading the RTL design. Design, analyzing the errors, uh, analyzing the elaborate report, setting up the constraints, and doing a compile, a basic compile. Now, many times uh, there are designs uh, that are uh, uh, that have very difficult goals uh, that are either very area intensive or very time intensive. So, uh, design compiler does provide us with a lot of tools and commands on. Uh, Options so that we could uh, tackle these these problems uh, and use them to uh, fine tune our design. So it is very uh, important before uh, going to this unit to go back to unit three and clarify whatever doubts you have. The agenda is that uh, I'll introduce uh, the so uh, all the features, all the advanced features for. Getting a lower area or a better timing, better performance are contained majorly contained in the command called compile ultra. So compile ultra is the uh, much more advanced form of compile. So whatever we discuss in this session is majorly will be majorly about compile ultra. Most of the things are done under the hood and are not transparent to us, but some of the things are. We can control some of the things and. Uh, all Tweak them to suit our needs. So I'll introduce Compile Ultra. Uh, we look at uh, something about FSM optimization. We look at the options, uh, path group and critical range. What are they? What, how are they used? Um, then there is something called advanced critical path, critical path resynthesis. We'll see how uh, they will be tackled. Uh, we'll see about auto ungrouping. Then we'll see cost priority. Compile directives. These, uh, there are quite a few slides about data path optimization, which is very interesting. We'll relook at the compiler ultra options again, and uh, lastly, the uh, slightly more complex topic, uh, register data. So uh, DC ultra the compile ultra. So DC launched uh, the, the regular compile is called DC expert. So DC launched a command called compiler. First, DC launched a feature called DC Ultra. So there was a command called set, set Ultra optimization. You had to set that variable to true to enable that. But now everything, uh, all such functionality comes under the hood of the command compile Ultra. So it's the full strength of DC Ultra in a single command. Now these slides are by synopsis, so there would be obviously some marketing terms involved here. So, so what DC Ultra enables us to do, it enables us to do a system optimization under the hood. Uh, extensive data path optimization. So earlier, uh, back in early 2000s, there was a uh, tool by Design Compiler called Module Compiler. Module Compiler was specifically built to tackle complex data paths. Data path means uh, all the operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, shifting, comparators, and so on. So now all that functionality of Module Compiler is now extensive. Actually, all that functionality is brought under Compiler. So it identifies arithmetic operations. It will provide a common engine to optimize uh, data path for. So data path will need optimization across various tools. So the optimization does not end once you subscribe. The backend tools also uh, do some optimizations based on placement and routing data. So then uh, there are uh, some options. Uh, we'll see. We'll see critical path synthesis. Uh, we, it also allows us to uh, change to control the cost function priorities. Then DC Ultra, uh, Compile Ultra also uh, gives us option to automatically ungroup modules based on either area or time. Then uh, let's see the uh, DW Foundation. So uh, the new DW Foundation. So the Latest DW Foundation libraries have support for all these things. It has support for ISP data path components. It, has, uh, it even has an Umba on paper that is used for ARM. 
it has microcontrollers, uh, then memory IPs, uh, then verification IPs of common purpose. So it has a, a, a large collection of IDERs, of factors and multipliers with various implementations like uh, carry select, carry look ahead. Uh, and for multipliers, it has booth coded for its screen, non booth coded for its screen. So the codes here that uh, you see, uh, the code like RPCS, uh, CLF. So uh, just note it down, uh, they will be uh, available. To, um, you can see that as part of the report resources. Uh, so uh, how do we, just a reminder, how do we make sure that DW library is read? We have to uh, select set the variable synthetic library to DW foundation of LDB, and we have to append this to the link library. Okay. You could set this in synopsis setup. I believe in the uh, later latest versions now, uh, the, the design there is loaded by Excel often as we do compile it. You don't have to do anything like this now. You can try it out in the lab. So, uh, as I told you, these are, uh, there are some marketing slides there, so it uh, also tells what are the new design there functions. It is specific to a particular version, so these slides are uh, dated uh, somewhat, uh, I think, few years back. So these are now not new features. These are the features that are already available to you. Um, it supports lot. So I believe in the data part, whatever version you are using of it uh, in the lab will have many more designer functions over and above this. So to know more about this, you can go to uh, Prolnet to see some of the documentation. So it has lot more arithmetic functions, saturation, time multiplier, uh, absolute value, there is a graphics alpha blender which is used for video applications and so on. So video applications typically require a lot of data part uh, functions. So designer has support for, for a lot of these. Let's uh, look at the SSM compiler now. Uh, now uh, the design compiler by default has features for automatic SSM dependence and extraction. Extraction means that from the elaborated design, uh, DC knows that what all flops are part of the final statement. And then, so there's a variable called system auto inferring, which uh, default value, now default value might have been changed. You, could, you can verify by doing a print bar on this variable in the system, but what is the default, default value? So the, usually the FSM flow is already enabled. And you can just do a compiler try and it will do the job. You don't have to do anything specific. However, there's something called state minimization. What it does is that um, if some states are unused, then DC has a capability of uh, removing and optimizing of those states. So uh, this feature is not <laughs> enabled by default. Uh, the reason is that um, the state minimization is a complex process. And the tools that do a formal verification. So formal verification is a way by which we can verify that the gate level netlist we have is functionally equivalent to the RTL level. Now, it's not to verify whether the tool is correct or not. Tool, uh, tool does the job based on our commands and constraints. It may happen that the mistake happens in issuing a command to the tool. For example, uh, I could say I could force the port to uh, logic zero while compiling by mistake. So DC will optimize off that the logic connect to the to that code. But when I do formality, when I do an equivalence check, I find that my RTL and my netlist are not matching. Why? Because by mistake I did a constant zero on one particular code. So uh, formal formal verification is a very sophisticated, uh, very good method to verify that. The RTL matches the netlist. You can even compare netlist versus netlist or RTL versus netlist. Uh, formal means that it's a static approach. It is not based on any vectors. It is not a simulation. It just compares the proof tables. It, 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 it makes logic cones in both reference and implementation design. And at each of, it has something called a compare point. At each of those compare points, it will verify whether the logic cone is equivalent across both the design. So the, if we enable state minimization, then there are problems we can encounter in formal verification because formal verification does not understand the concept of state minimization. So we, uh, 
if you are using formal verification then you have to be very very careful when you enable this it might lead to some problems so that is why it is turned to false by default so uh, design compiler has some formality support in the sense that it will write out some files which formality or can formality that in a tool from the so it can read those files and uh, understand what design compiler has done so uh, there is a variable called fsm export formality state info again uh, so it is again recommended here that uh, formal methods do not support state minimization so we should use fsm enable state minimization with great care right? now so uh, recommendation uh, there is nothing special you can uh, you should do for fsm uh, state recognition it will be automatically done under the hood and uh, however you can enable this uh, variable for state minimization which i would recommend not to use at the first either so these uh, whatever methods we are discussing here are used for very very special cases when there is a case that you are not using a common constraint on a particular part on a small part of the design you can employ these techniques now let's look at uh, creating path groups uh, so we have a uh, there's a uh, concept uh, there's a mechanism by which we can group certain amount of uh, some paths any path uh, so usually what a design compiler would do is it will break all timing paths into groups the group is defined by the capture group So the clause that captures uh, the data, the name of that clause is the group name. So uh, if let's say there is no capture clause, then it will come to a default clause group or a none, which is called also a none. You can see uh, I have discussed this in the lab session also. Now, so all paths not associated with the clause are in the default path group. Now, if a design has complex clocking or complex uh, timing requirements or complex constraints, any of this case, one can create path groups to focus uh, DC on special critical paths, specific critical paths in a design. Now, uh, so uh, the uh, so by default, DC will create. Let's say, let's say you have five groups. So by default, DC will create five clock groups. Plus one default group for paths that are not coming under each of these five clock groups. Now it will try to meet the timing requirement for each group. It will try to make the WN is zero for each clock group. And if for a particular path clock group it is not able to meet timing, it will affect the timings of the same group but not the other group. That means. Irrespective of the timing, how the timing looks in one path group, it will optimize the other group. So by creating a different group, so by default, design compiler. This is the statement to remember. Design compiler works only on the worst volatile inputs. The optimization can be controlled by creating and prioritizing path groups, which affect only the maximum delay path. apart from so you can uh, create a group a special uh, let's say you want you know that one path is very critical in your design you can create a separate group even though the, uh, the dc will by default create a path group based on the capture block but you could create a group for that special path but the and give any name to it now if even if you don't set higher priority to it dc will try to make wns of this path group so first Thing you try, but without increasing the priority. Other option is that that you could set the path group priority by assigning weights to each group. The default weight is one dot zero, which is a default. Otherwise, the weights can be from zero to hundred. This is one example uh, that to indicate that the path from input I N three to flip flop one is the highest priority path. You can use this kind of a command, group path. This this is a string. It can be any name from I N three to F F one D. This is the path we wanted to optimize with higher priority, and we have increased the weight to two point five. So this is the way 
you can pick and choose paths and tell DC to work more on some group or less on other group. Right. So uh, there is a very good example in, a, in, the, in, in the last four of design compiler where I have discussed uh, where I have what I have done is that uh, first I have made all the input group all the paths starting from input or ending at output as a register to this all will be one group. And I have compared those uh, tiny reports to the case where I create separate groups for input register part and register part. Uh, please go through that example in lab code. It is a very good uh, example to understand how group path works and how to see optimization. Right. Okay. Now, uh, other uh, concept is of optimizing near critical path. Now, by default. In a, in a particular path group, if DC finds that WNS is zero, it will stop the optimization process. What it means, and it will proceed to area recovery. It will not do any delay, delay optimization because it has already met the goal. Now, let's say you want that DC should not stop at zero WNS. Let's say you want DC to fix timing till let's say plus hundred by picoseconds. It can be a special requirement for a particular group. So uh, there's a concept called Critical range. So critical range uh, is the one uh, is, the, is the parameter that defines the maximum delay for function. And if we change it, we can we can when we add a critical range to a path group, we change this function from WNS to critical negative path. So by default is always WNS. Target is WNS for each path group to be zero. But by applying this critical range. We are changing the maximum delay for function from WNS to CNS, which is called critical limited path. And DC will optimize all paths between this critical range, within this critical range. Obviously, specifying it will mean that DC will have to work more. And uh, so, therefore, it is recommended to use critical range only during the final implementation phase when you are very sure that you want this to happen. The guideline is you should not specify critical range, which is more aggressive than 10 percent of the block period. So, uh, critical range option is available to you as part of the group path command. So, in this earlier path, uh, this uh, minus weight tells DC that this is of a higher priority. Further, you could add a minus critical range option here to tell DC to what slack it should fix, right. Again, so you could use a group path or you could use simply set critical range. Set critical range, you can set it a particular design and a particular cell and so on. Uh, please read the man page for set critical range for more information. Now, uh, let us see a uh, concept which is called advanced critical path frequency. Now, DC uh, performs, now let us say you have compiled a design and found that. Uh, Design is violating by somehow. Now, uh, in the second phase, what you can tell DC is that uh, do a compile minus map effort. So this is an option of compile, not compile ultra. Compile ultra has this uh, advanced critical path synthesis under the hood. But usually, compile option the map effort is set default value is set to medium. So when you do a medium. If you are meeting the time timing goals, uh, you do not need to come here, uh, use this option. But if you are not meeting the timing goals, you can use this. And the as strategies include this uh, one of the two of the most famous strategies are aggressive logic duplication and improved technology mapping. Let us see uh, what it means. So, this is one example where uh, this is the critical path from this the green uh, thing represents the green line represents the critical path. Goes through logic, uh, the the blue bubble here, and to the critical pin name critical. So during advanced CPR, what DC can do, it can break this logic and restructure it into such a manner that critical it makes the critical path smaller in terms of the delay. So uh, so A and B are not critical. So it will duplicate the logic. Now this restructured logic, logic at the top, which feeds critical, will be uh, optimized for delay. And the one, this one below, since uh, path to A and B is not critical, it will not be the cell cell will not be upsized as well. So the logic is duplicated here. Obviously, area is increased. 
but then you want the timing to be short on the critical path. One more example could be resizing along the critical path. Now let's say before uh, the drivers are one x one x one x pre critical. After these drivers are upside and the drivers may be in, in the core this core of logic also are upside that feed to the critical one, right? So, uh, but these things only happen for critical path, not for on the path. What are the critical paths? Critical paths are the paths with worst negative slack in each path. Okay. How do we enable this? We tell we, uh, we tell compile minus map of high. Now, in many cases, compile minus map of high takes a long amount of time to process. So, you should only do this first. You should try compile. Compile or compile ultra. If it works fine, then good. If not, you can use this compile minus map of high to see if uh, after doing critical path resynthesis, your design needs timing. Okay. It needs a DC ultra license again. Uh, so uh, then, these uh, these uh, compile ultra support auto ungrouping. Compile also supports auto ungrouping. Uh, so auto ungrouping will allow DC to merge cells and optimize logic. So if there are like uh, the module will log, uh, when log module will create an artificial boundary, right? and if there are too many small combinations clouds of logic that talk to each other. Across these logical hierarchies, then DC cannot optimize them effectively. If we let DC to ungroup them, remove the hierarchy, then um, many small cones of logic put together, clouds of logic put together, can um, help DC to optimize it more effectively, right? So it improves. It also improves the timing because now you can again. So any kind of optimization like this, which ungroups the hierarchies. Will help you in both timing and area, right? You can the the logic can be shared. Let's say there are adders which can be shared. So again, area and timing will both improve. Uh, so the graphic here shows it that this uh, this part of combination logic here. There are three parts of combination logic between these two blocks. Uh, obviously, uh, optimizing them each of them individually. Uh, it's better to optimize. Then combine together, uh, area and timing of the second circuit will be better than the first one. Uh, further, you can extend this further. You can combine all these three together in one big combinational cloud. You can even ungroup this. So, for one uh, one level of ungroup you can do uh, by setting. So, manual ungroup you can do by setting using the command set ungroup. And you can ungroup or you can use ungroup minus all, which will remove all hierarchy from the design to make the design flat. You can use the ungroup command to ungroup a specific part of the design. Now, over and above this, over and above manual ungrouping that DC allows you to do, there is an option called auto ungrouping. So, uh, one is block size based ungrouping, where you said that say that okay, all the blocks that have the cell count smaller than this number. Please ungroup it, right? So, the default for this, we can use a variable to control this. Compile auto ungroup area number of cells. Default is 30. Uh, by default, area and delay ungrouping count only the the child cells in the immediate hierarchy, and the child cells in sub design are not considered. You can again use this variable to change the behavior. Compile auto ungroup. Count leaf cells. Now, uh, so compile has two options: compile minus auto ungroup based on area or delay. Um, we can explicitly, uh, I've told you before, we can explicitly ungroup a particular model by using the ungroup command. Or, on the other hand, if we want to prevent some block to be ungrouped, we don't want a particular block to be ungrouped. We can set don't touch on it. Or we can set ungroup calls on a particular design. Right? This is a, uh, a example script. So the compile auto ungroup area number of cells. We have changed the value. The default is 30. We have changed it to 180. So this is the design we're talking about. We don't want ALU to be uh, ungrouped. So ALU is set ungrouped to false. We don't touch none control. 
but please make sure if we say don't touch on mem control mem control should already be mapped it should not be an rtl form otherwise dc will not even do nothing we set ultra opt so this command is no more uh, needed in, in the later version so you can just use compile ultra or or in this case you can just use compile minus map of or type or to ungroup area so in this case we are enabling the critical path resynthesis we are also saying it to ungroup based on area uh, we can report uh, auto ungroup by saying report auto ungroup it will tell us what are the um, designs that are ungrouped and it looks like this mem control is remains as it is alu remains as it is alu because we said ungroup on it mem control because we said don't touch on it b is ungrouped c is ungrouped and auto ungrouping it will give us ungroup. right you can try that out again in the lab now uh, there's something called critical path auto ungrouping so earlier what we saw was mostly area based ungrouping so for critical path ungrouping uh, is usually compile ultra has a feature where uh, by default it will do critical path ungrouping by default to prevent it however we have seen that this in lab 2 i guess that if we do not specify anything to compile ultra just do compile ultra so compile ultra will ungroup the small designs based on the binary to prevent this ungrouping this is critical path uh, auto ungrouping to prevent this we have to set a variable or we have to say compile ultra minus no auto ungroup right so but obviously the advantages for ungrouping are many that uh, there is a lesser area and better path uh, applies it is only applies to critical path with negative flag uh, delay uh, improvement from more consistent and more predictable now uh, so uh, we talked about fsm uh, extraction we talked about uh, critical path synthesis and we talked about auto ungrouping so uh, just to summarize for fsm uh, extraction you don't need to do anything special compile it as good enough again for critical path synthesis you have an option called compile minus map effort high but better than that i would recommend go for compile ultra third thing for auto ungrouping compile ultra supports auto ungrouping by default to prevent that you have to give minus no auto ungroup in compile ultra so for all three things we have seen before instead of using compile if you use compile ultra you get everything under the hood you don't have to worry about all the work but it's good to know how are things done qs that or what are the options available to you right there it's always good to know the options available to you now let's look at something which is independent of either compiler or compiler this command set cost priority let's you change the function the cost function priority this according to which dc will offer usually the priority runs like this uh, connection class uh, you can read more about it uh, in the, uh, in the file manual i don't explain it here it is then uh, uh, again multiple port nets uh, these are min fan out bin capacitors these are top four which are usually uh, the highest priority and for a simple design and simple one single voltage case usually you won't encounter any such function in a connection class or min fan out or min capacitor usually these are encountered less in when we talk, uh, in in case of simple design and simple logic right uh, connection class comes into picture when we have multiple voltage uh, cells multi voltage design uh, then uh, or uh, yeah you, you support multi utility cells and multi voltage and uh, you have signals crossing those voltage domain multiple port nets again uh, Design specific. Usually, I don't see a lot of min fan out and min cap as a possibility. Major things are these: max transition, max fan out, max cap. And degradation doesn't uh, apply to our to our course. It is mainly used by DC to graphic analog. And max delay, min delay, max power, max area. This is the default priority in direction of the arrow. And among out of these, the ones covered in blue 
our user prioritizable. This is the default one, but we could using the command set cost priority, we can change the priority. And this is the syntax. No need to do anything if you are using the default feature. Default is fix DRC first, then go to timing. Delay means max delay has higher priority than max design delay. You could actually try and use this. Let's say if your design has uh, timing violations and it needs DRC, you can actually try to do the other way around. You can uh, set cost priority minus delay and see if the, your design has better timing. Again, specify that min delay has higher priority than max delay but lower priority than max design rule. This is a very strange feature to have to have. I am not even sh I haven't used it till now and I'm not sure who would want to solve old timing problems in review synthesis, but it's still it's there, so be careful about using it. I would recommend never use it. Uh, there can be about some special case which I do not think of it now. And again, there is a very customizable cost list where you can uh, you can uh, set the priorities among all these uh, customizable checks, customizable cost functions. So this is an example where uh, usually max now comes before max delay, but now you uh, now we have said that okay, max delay comes before max now. Again, this is a very special. Uh, this we would use in a very special cases. In very special cases, where you probably you you are running trials, where you want to see if the design rules uh, clash with the design, the max delay and minimum delay. So uh, these are mostly for experiment. Uh, so uh, please be careful before using that cost. It will definitely affect your optimization. Now. Uh, DC allows you for allows greater control over some now optimization typical optimization contains lot of phases. So DC allows for a greater control over different strategies. Some of the strategies are cost, constant propagation, deletion of unconnected gates, local optimization, critical path synthesis, gate sizing, and example examples. Now you could individually turn among this four of these you can individually turn off and on. By default all are on. This command to do this is called set compile directive. Uh, one of the things you could turn uh, on and off is critical path resynthesis. So usually critical path resynthesis is set to true. But let's say when you do a compile this is the default medium method. So the extent of critical path resynthesis is comparatively less, which is controlled by this. If you specifically give compile minus map effort high, that means you are asking DC to do more of critical path resynthesis. So again, these two or three options are for uh, they have similar use it, but the extent to which the effort optimization differs. So here in this case, we can set uh, critical path resynthesis to be the true or false. By default, it's set to true. So uh, something like this, let's say f is critical. Then this this cloud of logic uh, before f is equal to a h plus b h bar plus c d. After uh, critical path resynthesis, uh, these uh, these two clouds are combined, and now f has some function, uh, and uh, a a d bar plus b d. I'm not sure what this means here. Maybe it's, some, it's a typo. Whatever the, the function remains same, but uh, the critical path is grouped and re-implemented like this. A portion of the critical design's critical path is grouped. So these two are grouped because f is the critical point, and they are re-implemented to improve timing. This is enabled during high effort compile. You could, if you want, you could set this false. But uh, it's again a question that. If you are using compile minus map of how, that means you want DC to perform critical path right? Then there is uh, something called constant propagation. So let's say you have ports, uh, design ports tied off to one or zero. Uh, you might have one or zero on uh, the course of some design you have instantiated. 
So DC will propagate that and it will optimize of the gates based on these values. For example, here the iron gate is tied to 0. So this becomes 0, if this becomes 0, this becomes 1, if this becomes 1, this function becomes A. So DC will do this kind of thing. So this is a very basic level of optimization. Ideally, it is on and it should be on because uh, these are the things the constant values affect a lot of optimization in a design. So, by default, it is on, but somebody who might want to uh, keep the gates uh, in there, which are tied to constants, may turn it to false, and, and obviously the area will be more. Okay. Third thing is deletion of unconnected gates. Again, if the gate is unconnected, uh, then DC will use a value such that so the gate is unconnected. Let's say a gate is unconnected. So what DC will do is it will remove it simply. So here, for example, there will be an extrapolation because in simulation there will be an extrapolation because this this value is unknown. So what DC will do? It will just remove this cone of noise which is right there because X probably is not used. I think X will not be used further. That is why. DC removes all this logic connectivity. Again, this is one of the basic optimization techniques. Uh, you could turn it off by using set compile directive minus delete and loaded delete to false, set this to false. Fourth is called local optimization. So DC performs optimization within the neighborhood of a given cell to improve timing and area. So the option is called local optimization. Example is uh, fan out optimization. Uh, so, for example, uh, this uh, gate here has a large panel and this is a critical path. So, what DC could do is that it can it can clone this NAND gate and put one more NAND gate here, which has same or input conditions here, and it will drive this critical one using so that it will have a single fan out here, and then it can probably downsize it, right? So, because uh, Whatever, so or or it can upsize this one and so on. So these are the optimization which occur in the gates that are in the neighborhood of the critical path. The critical path. Right? Again, you could turn it off, but I would not recommend it. So in summary, they are all defaulted to true, and anyone can be turned turned off. Uh, again, the recommendation is not to play with this. Uh, the idea is to first synthesize the design, see if it meets timing goals. So these are these are the other way around, but other way around. Now you would obviously not do this if the design is meeting your now if your design is meeting your timing goals and uh, you don't have anything uh, any special requirement, you will not do. It. In cases, for example, in the constant propagation. Now let's go back. Why would I need to turn it off? Now let's say now the, I am not sure about this value whether it's zero or one, and this is connected to something. I am not sure what this value would be. Now I can choose this constant of I can turn this off. So DC will keep all these gates, and then I can probably change the value here and see how it works. But if I turn this on, if I let it to be the default value, all the gates would be removed, and I will not have the flexibility to check. What happens if this thing is zero or one in the group? So the, again, there can be very special cases where we want to turn one of these uh, compiled directives to off. Uh, and obviously, in these cases, we are not worried about area at all because all of these cases, if you turn off, the area will be worse. Timing might also be worse. Right? Okay. Now let's look at uh, DC ultra data path optimization. Uh, so uh, the compile ultra compared to compile command delivers a better QR for design containing arithmetic operator. Uh, it has a comprehensive data path extraction, uh, multiplication, addition, uh, subtraction, comparators, muxes. Uh, it, ha it employs uh, timing driven resource sharing. Uh, it has support for carry chain implementation, support for bit truncation. You see examples of this. So, uh, and uh, the best thing is that you don't have to do anything. Compile Ultra does everything for you. You just have to see what it actually does. So, uh, after the design is read and analyzed, uh, elaborated, 
during the compile during the stage that during which compile ultra runs pc ultra will run something called data path exception and then it will start choosing design by library component which best suit this data path and then it will proceed to logic optimization before going on to mapping so uh, ultra data path optimization is something that runs under the hood during compile ultra if there is no other command there is no special separate command to do this so uh, for example let's look at carry save adder transformation so conventional arithmetic you have a minus b c plus b e plus f and then these two are added together and then there is one more adder so usually if you draw it on paper there will be carry propagate adders addition will be done in group of two and uh, you can you understand that you should understand that is the carry bit that takes the longest amount of time to go from the input to the output so let's say in this path in this path there are three adders 1 2 3 so it is the carry bit that will take the maximum delay so typically the complete so complete computation at the end of each operator so at the end of this operator this will represent the true value of c c plus c carry propagate adders are either of a ripple kind or carry loop ahead or carry flex they are slow and they are large the tradition adders what ultra supports is something called carry save adder now in this case addition can be done in group of two and the output share they are partially computed they are not final a plus b plus c they are partially computed and fed here to another carry save adder and now in the end we employ a traditional carry propagate adder which will do the final addition now in this case the intermediate points they do not represents the actual addition they are partial uh, they are partial computation partially computed so that what it does is that it improves speed and it makes sure that the carry is does not become a critical path so but the uh, the flip side is that the intermediate points here they are not there the values which you should expect. so for example the intermediate point here is not actually a minus b plus c right so uh, but the addition the final value of y here is a capital right so uh, again uh, example of data path transformation here there are two multiplication and addition so what dc will do is it will try and make do addition first and then do a multiplication so this is a into b plus a into c so it will do a, so b and c are common here so it will do a b plus c and then into a so it it, it knows that from your expression it will know that it will do a proper transformation and it will do a resource sharing to make sure that circuit meets the timing requirement right repeated repetitive addition optimization for example z is equal to x plus y here if you solve this it will come to 2a plus 4b and 2 into a means a left shifted by 1 4 into b means b left shifted by 2 and then add it to it so based on these expression dc is able to know that it's able to calculate the optimal number of operators needed One more example is uh, partial constant optimization. Uh, now, let's say you have constant bits. So, for example, B zero uh, left shifted by three has will be padded with zeros. Again, C zero left shifted by three will be padded with zeros. So, this this logic here in the circle here is redundant. You do not need an adder to compute this, right? So, this is transformed. So, this is uh, removed. constraints are optimized and the tree is reduced so the final adder is one bit instead of four bits so here there are 1 2 3 and 4 four additions taking place but after optimization after uh, doing a partial constant optimization this is removed and only one level of addition is done right so obviously a great uh, area saving is is, is made by this
So enabling is simple. Again, uh, the design by license is required, is required for data path optimization. Design by library should be uh, is enabled automatically once you run compile data. Runs under the hood. It's on by default, uh, and the command we have we saw this command in the uh, lab four of design compiler of unit three. Uh, we saw a command called report resources, which will list out all the data path resources used, inferred by design compiler. It will tell what is the implementation uh, that it shows. It will tell what is the module name of the data path it shows. It will tell what are the operations that are going on in that module and so on. So uh, the synthesis methodology is that avoid expensive carry propagation. When you have additions, uh, when you do additions that are multi that are like more than two or three, it's the carry bit that takes the longest to arrive at the output. Right. So avoid expensive carry propagation. Uh, use redundant representations like carry save and partial product. It uses high-level arithmetic optimization, and it it tries to apply these techniques in the largest possible data path partition. And we'll come to that. What does the largest possible data path partition mean? So, uh, what uh, DC will try to do uh, is that it will try to extract the largest possible data path block from the elaborated data. So one of the examples can be a sum of products type of expression. So in this case, any arbitrary sum of products can be implemented. So one data path block means that let's say you write such an expression. Z is equal to A and B. A into B. Sorry, this is the multiplication. A multiplied by B plus C multiplied by D plus some constant into E plus F minus D plus some constant. Now such such sum of products. Can be so this the it's actually a very very compute intensive expression right there are so many multiplications and addition and subtraction all of these DC will determine can be done inside one module so just by writing this expression DC will now instantiate one module and if you notice in lab code of design compiler we saw that uh, when we chose uh, when we told DC not to ungroup DW during compiler class. It actually gave us that module, right? It gave us that module name also. So it chooses one module in which it will implement all of these. Now the uh, benefit of choosing one module is that all such operators will be will be are already ungrouped inside that module, and DC can do aggressive optimization and recursion. Right? Again, limited product of some can be implemented in one data. So what it will do is that it will Employ the uh, whatever addition technique we saw earlier. Uh, this kind of addition technique, and make sure that the final it will need only one CPA in the final stage to implement it. Right? Otherwise, all other points would be written as they will be partial uh, expressions. So, in one data path block with one CPA. Again, POS limited can be implemented in one data block with one CPA. Select of operations are uh, considered to be data paths. Uh, so it will, uh, what it will do, it will try to, so such an expression, it will try to implement it in such a manner that there won't be any carry propagation before the select of. So carry propagation is always the last step. Right. Again, comparisons are similar. For example, T1 is equal to A plus B, uh, T2 is equal to C into D, and Z is equal to T1 greater than T2. So, comparisons will be implemented on redundant internal results, that is, without CPA before the comparison. So, CPA is again the last step to be done. Right. So, largest possible data path blocks are extracted from RTL code. The expressions operators are merged into data path block. Uh, we will see an example. Uh, so extraction can occur only when operators are directly connected without any non-arithmetic logic in between. 
chain of arithmetic operations uh, against swap type expressions are extracted. These are the operators that are extracted as part of data path. Operation operators involving bit truncations are extracted. What is not extracted is shifters and equality comparators. So uh, equality equality comparators are uh, implemented somewhat differently. They use ZOR gates. So uh, and ZOR gates are a different uh, sort of gates altogether. They are not uh, typically uh, very similar to AND and OR gates in terms of what optimizations can be done on them. So therefore, they are not extracted. So uh, benefits of extraction. So if when I'm, so when we say extraction, it means that DC is able to understand the functionality, uh, and it will try to implement that functionality as part of a single module. The benefit is that it can share data path operators. It utilizes utilizes carry save arithmetic techniques. Uh, High level arithmetic optimizations are carried out on extracted data path blocks and explores better solutions that might involve a different resource sharing configuration. So, uh, there might be some resource sharing cases which we might not have uh, envisioned at the time of writing of the RTL, but then DC will try and figure out if it can do. Uh, better resource sharing uh, by looking at your uh, extracted data path and it will implement that. So, uh, recommendation is to use report timing to check timing and optimization results and use report resources to, to determine which operators were, were absorbed into the data path. Uh, obviously, always checking the warning message is always recommended. So uh, uh, again, these, uh, this slide tells that uh, what generation strategy. There are some intelligent generation strategies for better QR mapping of data path, special cells, OS2 compressor, booth encoder, carry select adder, inverting full adder, and so on. So uh, it automatically selects booth or non-booth encoding for multipliers based on a design goal. So now with uh, we will see an example, but uh, the most important point here is that you will, while using compile and draft, and if you have the design and actions available with you, you will not be, as an RTL designer, you will not be concerned about what implementation is being used. You should only be concerned about your logic. So, the score the logic defined by the specification of the architecture. When you start coding, you can use adder, you can use multipliers, you can simply use plus and multiplication and minus one. And do everything what you want. And now, obviously following the different various guidelines that we have talked about, about artful coding, about logical partitioning, about and then so on, right? Not creating artificial boundaries and so on. And now let DC extract the data part. So again, you don't have to do anything special for it. The compile command, ultra command will extract the data path for you. You can use report resources to list down all those data paths, to list down what all DC extracted, what all it is implemented. And then after resource sharing and after choosing the, after uh, extracting the data path, now DC will go on and it will choose the implementation based on the design code. Right? So that's what it says there. It selects, for example, for multiplication, it will select Booth or non booth encoding and the decision is always based on the on the design goals, right? 